as it was in the days of Noah, folks. According, and you know, I'm not, how do I say this? I don't quote from the book of Enoch often, clearly. But the book of Enoch is one of the oldest books found in what many of us know as the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it is recorded in the book of Enoch that just before the flood of Noah, our planet tilted on its axis or became what's called inclined. In the book of Enoch, chapter 65, verse 1, it says the following. It says, And in those days Noah saw the earth had tilted and that its destruction was near. We can compare this to a text, or we can actually compare this text with another Hebrew book, also not found in the biblical canon. And if you're part of our school of ministry, you would know that we have actually been getting into the canonization of the books of the Bible, the books that were left out, and so forth. And we actually continue schooling next Tuesday now that the holidays are over. Anyway, we compare this text with another Hebrew book, also not found in the biblical canon. And it's very rare that I do something like this. But for the sake of today's broadcast, I'm going to mention another book besides the book of Enoch that's clearly, again, not found in the Bible, but is one of the oldest books that were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Another one was quoted also from, or in the Old Testament. And this book was called the Megillah. Megillah. It's also known as a scroll. It's a scroll of what's called Yeshir or Jeshur. And it compared, and compared in its description with the book of Revelation, it says in the book of Jeshur or Yeshir, in chapter 6, verse 1, it says the following. And on that day, the day of the flood, the Lord caused the whole earth to shake, and the sun darkened, and the foundations of the world raged, and the whole earth was moved violently, and the lightning flashed, and the thunder roared, and all of the fountains in the earth were broken up. Now, folks, the Bible's depiction of the second coming sounds like an eerily magnified version of the days of Noah, Noah that was later described in the book of Jasher, just as we read. Now, I want to read now to you in the book of Revelation as we are talking about this headline we just read, warning over huge spike and devastating earthquakes this year as earth spin slows down and how it can relate to a possible magnetic pole reversal that took place in the days of Noah. In other words, we're being told, we're being shown, these are the signs that we're living in the days of Noah when we're talking about the earth spin slowing down. Because this is exactly what took place in the actual days of Noah. Again, according to the book of Jashar, chapter 6, verse 1, this is a Hebrew book. Again, not found in the biblical canon, but it's still quoted from in the Old Testament. And, of course, in the book of Enoch, which, again, is not in the Bible, but is one of the oldest books that were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So let me read to you, though, from the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 14. Read with me, please. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 14, and it says the following, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs, when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. That portion of scripture sounds, again, eerily familiar to the verse, to the chapter and verse in the book of Jasher, also known as Yeshur, in the book that's called the Megillah, also known as a scroll, that we just read in chapter 6, verse 1 of that portion, or that book. Now, the National Geographic had stated that the Earth's weakening magnetic field is tied to a pole reversal. According to scientists, the solar system is a hostile place. And Earth is under attack from deadly cosmic radiation. Life on Earth only exists because of the protective magnetosphere, which is an invisible force field that surrounds the planet. I actually call this the glory of God. And that's uh, proven in the book of Psalms. Uh, anyway, this magnetosphere, an invisible force field that surrounds the planet, 
but new evidence reveals the vital shield is weakening at an alarming rate. The region above the South Atlantic is experiencing dangerous levels of radiation, again, according to the National Geographic, and scientists believe it is a sign of global decline in the magnetic field. So it's not a matter of if the Earth will lose its magnetic field someday, it's a matter of when and what will happen to life if it does. It's so fundamental to scientists' theory of evolution and continued existence that the race is on to understand why it's changing. Now, the National Geographic also had a part two to this Earth's magnetic pole reversal and it impending. And they claim that in recent decades, scientists have noticed that the elusive magnetic North Pole has been moving faster. That is what you would call pole shifting. So they are seeking to answer a couple of questions. The first one being, does the wandering pole's acceleration have any connection to the Earth's weakening magnetic field? Another question that they're asking is, how much weaker will the Earth's magnetic field actually get? And will it cause a pole reversal? And then you have the National Geographic that had a part three. A part three of the Earth's magnetic pole shift. Now, many scientists now believe that the South Atlantic, the, the South Atlantic anomaly is the start of a global magnetic field reversal. So you had 2012's near miss, the, the big solar storm that took place. It was big enough to knock modern civilization back to the 18th century. Earth's weakening magnetic field, uh, you know, for them, they were saying that the Earth's weakening magnetic field is a dramatic dip. It caused a dramatic dip spotted across the Western Hemisphere that could damage satellites. Now, folks, we have to understand that if we're living in the days of Noah, if these are signs that we're living in the days of Noah, then we have to make sure our houses are in order. You have experts telling us that we're going to be seeing a huge spike in devastating earthquakes, which is a sign of the times. Jesus himself said, again, that there will be earthquakes in various places. There will be great earthquakes in various places. And now you have the National Geographic also stating, or really confirming in a way, a magnetic pole reversal that lines up with the days of Noah, according to the book of Enoch and the book of Jasher. We had a supermoon, right? January 1st. Here we are January 4th, and there was an earthquake. Well, actually, there was a lot of earthquakes, but there was a pretty big one that really shook. It rattled several parts of the Bay Area over in San Francisco. The USGS reported a 4.4 earthquake that was centered in Berkeley that rattled several parts of the Bay Area. I'm not sure if this is coming in clear. If it's not, I apologize. But it says here, the United States Geological Survey reported a 4.4 earthquake they hit about three miles southeast of Emeryville at about 2.40 a.m. last night, or early in the wee hours of the morning. The shaking was felt across the Bay Area. The quake that was centered on the Hayward Fault was initially reported a higher magnitude, but later downgraded. Now, they're stating that the last big earthquake that was on this fault, called the Hayward Fault, happened about 150 years ago. That was back in 1868. In fact, the 150th anniversary is actually coming up from the big earthquake that last took place on this particular fault that just experienced an earthquake last night. So they're saying we think that the earthquake was a magnitude 6.8 or so that happened at that time. And we may be looking at another one. This may be a sign that another one is coming. Now, some may say, okay, well, you know, it was a small earthquake. I, I can't imagine that was from the supermoon. I can't imagine that's because of the earth's slowing down. And it was not that big of a deal. Well, listen, folks. It was reported in LA Times that more than 9 million, more than 9 million people felt the magnitude 4.4 earthquake that shook the Bay Area. Again, this lines, or this is, this is on a fault that had a massive or a very large earthquake that happened 150 years ago, and they're saying this could be due. Did the supermoon trigger it? Is the Earth's rotation now triggering earthquakes that could have a severe effect on the lives of humans, 
on specific fault areas around the world? It very well can be. Why? Because we're living in the last days. These are signs of the times. And also, don't forget your 2018 first fruit offering, my friends. I'm so excited. This is the second year uh, that we are doing this New Year first fruit offering for this year, 2018. Go to our website. Get more information as to what it means. Uh, simply put, is that you are dedicating a first fruit offering. You're bringing it onto the Lord. And by doing so, he sanctifies the entire lump. He sanctifies the entire year, 2018, on your behalf. Because a first fruit offering represents putting God first. It represents your labors. It represents your word, your sacrifice, the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Holiness. Jesus Christ in his second coming. It represents you. Get more information. I really want you, all of you, all of us to participate in this first fruit offering 2018. It only is until December, not December, excuse me, January, January 31st. It ends. And the reason why is because it's a first fruit offering. It's only for the beginning. So the first fruit offering is that you give a certain amount that the Lord puts in your heart towards the work of this end time ministry. This is a ministry of the Lord. This is a ministry that is good soil. And uh, he uh, desires to do something very special in your life for this year. Now, you go before him and you ask him what amount to bring. There's not a set amount. You know, people like to be real, um, I guess you could say creative. For 2018, sold $20.18. Or you could give... It's really, I don't, even, I don't know if you call it creative. It's really interesting. I'm, I'm not going to do any of that. I, there's no marketing technique here. This is just offering your first fruits, bringing your first fruits. Uh, and the Lord is ready to receive. So uh, be sure to go before the Lord. Find out how much to bring for your first fruit 2018. Go on to our website. Get more information. www.openyoureyespeople.com. Again, www.openyoureyespeople.com. With that, be sure to help support the work of this end time ministry on a monthly basis. Become a monthly supporter towards the work of this ministry. Make it part of your New Year's resolution. Say, you know what? I'm going to help support the work of this end time ministry. I've been blessed by the ministry. I receive from the ministry. I, I, you know, Others need to receive from the ministry and they need basic support. So I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to you know, help support it. I'm going to be a faithful supporter and I'm going to support on a monthly basis. Would that be you? Let it be you in Jesus' name. Be a monthly supporter. Help support the work of this end time ministry by becoming a monthly partner. Again, logging on to our website, www.openyoureyespeople.com, openyoureyespeople.com. Our mailing address as well as P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas 78154. And uh, well, we thank you for your support. We thank you for keeping us in your prayers and supporting the work of this ministry in Jesus' name. Amen.